Wait, there's more. The other, probably uh, the other thing that you're gonna run into, run into a lot. Cause here's the th here's what you have to realize. Every person that plays king, they want to do this to you. And if you play it against them and you're frustrated, this has probably happened to you at least once. You do not want to get gripped up, because he will do this to you. It happens to everybody. It's even I've seen it happen at the highest level. It happens. But look at that shit. 70% of your health just erased in an instant because you got gripped up once. What you have to understand is what the situation you're being put in. So this is an updated version of his chain throw chart. And I show you this not to intimidate you, but to give you a visualization on what you're what you're dealing with. It looks way more intimidating than it actually is. And you can, if you take a second to look at it, what you'll realize is all it's showing you is that if King gets an arm breaker throw on you, you're being put into an RPS. You have to pick one of three options. You can see when with the arm breaker, right? This is a one break. It depends on the King player's input and how they input the throw. You have a chance to break the initial throw. If you do not break the initial throw, again, as I just did, if you miss the initial throw, take a look at the model and look at when it's flashing colors and not flashing. You have multiple chances to break this. The big thing is don't mash indiscriminately. Pick the option that you want to protect against and mash that. Keep it consistent. But training mode is useful because you can see the windows in the chain where you can break and you'll be able to get your timing down to consistently, more consistently break them that way. Just take a look at the first one and we'll just explore this one first. The initial arm breaker happens. Let's say you get thrown, and now this is where the chain throw system comes in. After that initial throw, you're put into a rock, paper, scissors. If they want to go to the triple arm breaker, you have a window to break that with one. If they want to do the chicken wing face lock, you have an opportunity to break that by pressing one plus two. If they want to do the head jammer variation, you have an opportunity to break that with two. After you get initially gripped up, you have to make a choice. And the big thing is, what you want to do in training mode is, again, familiarize yourself with the timing in the moment where that input matters. The king player is going to be, be, they're playing rock, paper, scissors with you. But the thing that you have, to, the way you want to think about it is, you have to find the right moment. You have to find the moment for these throws where you have to play your piece or you're just going to lose. Triple arm. This is an option that you'll see often because most people naturally are going to be trying to protect uh, protect against the RDC, which is the one plus two variation of the first RPS like that. So you'll see at higher levels, people will opt just for the triple arm break like that. They clock out, take their damage, 50 damage just like that. But again, remember, if you get grown, ripped up through the initial throw, as soon as the arm snap happens, it's right at that moment. That's the snap right there. And I just press one and it, and it stops the triple arm break right there. You see your flash for a moment. That's your time to get your input in. So if he's going for the triple arm break, one, two, three, I missed my break window. He eat, I eat it, right? But what if he's going for the one plus two variation? Because this is the chicken wing face lock. As soon as it gets to there and you can see her flash again, that's the third moment where you have a chance to break. So the point is this, one plus two. I missed it. So I gotta play, so now, look at the chart and the way it works. If you miss that initial one plus two break after the initial throw, then you're not put in an RPS after that, you're put in a coin flip. So if they get this grab off on you, you're gonna have to play rock, paper, scissors. Then you're gonna have to play, if you don't protect against the one plus two, you're gonna have to do a coin flip. In training mode, familiarizing yourself with the timing and opportunities that you have to break these. So for example, this is the Dragon Sleeper finish, right? Because they know so many people are gonna be protecting against the RDC, you'll see them go for, and this is the mash route too, so if they don't even feel like doing the other one, they'll just mash it out, they'll get Dragon Sleeper. So in order to protect against that, it's right here, pressing one, and I break it. I missed the initial one, okay. Mashing one here, right there, that's it. And we get out. This is the two route, and this is important because look, if they get this two throw off after the initial throw, the follow-up is guaranteed for a significant chunk of damage. At low level, every king player wants to put you on the ground, right? So at low level, what you should be thinking is, if this motherfucker's trying to put me in the RDC, I'm protecting against the chicken wing face lock, I'm mashing one plus two for my life. 
So as the game develops and as you play better and better players, what you'll realize is, depending on the mind game that you're engaged in with the king player, they'll be like, you know what? You could have the one plus two. I'm going for the two, buddy. I'm going to take my damage and clock out. So then you, as you get better, you'll be like, you know what? This dude's not even going for RDC. He's going for the two. He wants to guarantee damage. So fuck this guy. I'm mashing two. And that's when they'll be like, fuck you, buddy. I'm going for the RDC. Or I'm, I wasn't even fucking around with the head jammer. I'm going for the one break. It, it becomes a mind game of adjusted RPS. But you have to stop them at the onset. At the You have to pass the first grade level first. Stop the throws and just be aware of where you can break them, right? Pick the route that you think and mash just that. I'm just mashing two. I'm just mashing two. It's pretty lean. You can mash it. But you got to be mashing fast. Mashing two. Now, there is more. <laughs> he's, he's got a lot. I want to point this out. Look at his hands on, on this one, which is broken with two. Versus this. See if you can tell the difference between these. Just by looking at the hands. You can't. This is the STF route, the standing heel hold route, rather. So this is a two break, right? And again, it's visually it looks the same. You know, you're guessing a lot with this character. Is the one plus two grab actually a one plus two grab, or is it giant swing? Uh, is this actually a one plus two grab, or is it a two grab, or is it a one grab? Is it a chain throw? Is it? A, you're you're guessing a lot, but that's why you know he's a grappler. It's how it should be, right? He, he should be scary. The reason why these charts are helpful is because you can see even here. The values of some of these, some are inherently more valuable than the others. And there are other intangibles with this too, like some offer better Oki than others, etc, etc. Looking at stuff like this is really helpful because it gives you a visual representation. Not because, I mean, obviously if you look at it at a glance and you don't know what you're looking at, this looks insane, right? You're like, hell no, dude, I did not sign up for organic chemistry this semester. But what it actually is showing you is that, oh wow, if he gets this grab, we play rock, paper, scissors, and then if I miss the second break, I'm playing, I'm doing a coin flip. If he gets this grab, we're just playing rock, paper, scissors. It's just showing you where the 50-50s are, where the, where the RPSs are. It's really just a way to show you that. So don't be intimidated by it. It's there to help you. Hop in there for yourself and get a, get a sense for where the timings are where you have opportunities to break like this. Don't, you're going to get gripped up. But the point is, make it as hard as possible for them to try to just erase your health like that. Don't be helpless, you know? The other thing, too, is King is not the only character that has this kind of stuff. There are other characters who are just as scary. For example, Mama Sita. So with her, you know, King, we just got off of him. He's a he's a big issue, right? But this is also a character who can kind of like a hidden threat and a very, very oppressive character to deal with as a low level player. This character is a huge knowledge check. Like, man, she can be very suffocating to play against, especially for the way Tekken 8 wants you to play this game. But I'll show you, she also has this same kind of chain throw stuff. And hers are, man, she has a selection of them as well too, right? If you go down to the bottom of her move list and take a look, backhand slap, she has a crab hold. But here's the thing, out of her back step, her back sway, she has a throw that you cannot break. This part, you're gonna get gripped up. You're gonna see this. You can't break that. But similar to our approach with the king chain throws, what's important is familiarizing yourself with the tree that that develops here. As soon as she gets the betrayer throw off, that is unbreakable. However, if she wants to go into the arm break, which you know is a one break because they tell you in the move list. The key part of here is figuring out where we can break. So see where my character flashed? It was right after that that kick to the leg. So if we input one at that moment, we break. The initial throw is guaranteed, you can duck it. But again, she has other options out of her back sway to where you can't just like rely on ducking the whole time. And they know that, they're gonna hit you with that stuff. So sometimes you're gonna get gripped up. But familiarize yourself with the tree and the moments where to input your breaks. You can mash it out too. I'm mashing one, mash one. You can hear me. See? What's important is that I'm mashing the same option the whole time. I'm just mashing one. Double arm break. So the tree, the way it develops for her is here. Snap kick. Then the arm break there. Then the double. This is also a one break route. So you have that initial kick to break right there. 
then right there, right when the snap happens, you saw Alza Senna flash. She was, we were able to get the input before the double break like that. Right here. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it, but that's what you want to look for. Right here. Get off me. Punch her in the kidney, get off. That's a one break. That's the one one route for her. So this is the the double arm break is the one one route. But for her, falling arm break. Let's see the variation here. But the point is again, same as with King. Familiarize yourself with the points where you can get those breaks. It's right where that kick happens, and right in the snap transition here. I'm pressing two there. And again, you know all this. Use what the game gives you. This is what the animation looks like if you don't break it. She plants you. Whatever you want to do there, whichever way you want to guess, it's right when that snap on the kick happens, and then in between the transition after the break. So here, and then here. So this is the one, one, and then two. I'm mashing two, mashing two, mashing two. Get off me. So familiarize yourself with that. Where that snap kick happens, that's a break point. Where the transition after the initial arm break happens, that's the second break point. Leg stretch arm lock, this is the two. Snap. After this snap, it's right here. See? Break. And this is what it looks like if you don't break it. That's a big chunk of damage for a character that has suffocating pressure. Don't let them get these for free. Do you know what bets you're making? Do you know when you have to make them? That's really what you're trying to figure out with the chain grab characters. Anyway, hop into training mode with these settings and get a look for it and a feel for it for yourself. And again, it doesn't take anything more than just like a couple, you know, five, ten minutes in training mode. And you'll already be thankful for it when you hop into ranked and you get gripped up in that one time. You know, you might not happen every time. You're going to the casino a little bit naturally, right? But the big thing is that one time where they try to put you in, they they try to get you on the ground and roll with you, and you say nope. That's just gonna feel so good. You're gonna be so happy, like oh man, I might be able to win the round now, you know? But that's a uh, that's a common, I think, low level a low level issue that people will run into with this game, because it's uh it's it's really easy for the characters that have these to just abuse them if you don't know. Don't get caught slipping. You're going to get gripped up. Just make sure you're ready when you do. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Be easy.